greetings all and welcome to yet another lesson on options in this video we would learn about market indicators using options and futures we will be basically looking into three indicators that is pcr that is put call ratio oi that is open interest and wix so let's start with pcr now pcr as the name suggests is basically put call ratio that means it is nothing but the volume that are traded in puts divided by the volume that are traded in call we basically divide how much ever volumes are done in put for a given day by the call volume for the same day to arrive at a put call ratio and this ratio tells us a lot about in which direction the market is heading suppose if there are a lot of buyers in the put then put trading volume would be higher than the call trading volume and because of which pcr ratio would be always above 1 similarly if call trading volume is greater than put trading volume that means market is trying to go up because a lot of people are trading in call and because of which pcr value will be always less than 1 now higher pcr suggests decline in the market and lower pcr suggests bullishness in the market the standard levels of pcr is that if pcr is greater than 1.5 that means market is highly bearish similarly if pcr is less than 0.6 it suggests that market is highly bullish now pcr also gives better judgment only in the first half of the month and not in the second half of the month we will understand all of this in detail also a lot of analysts plot pcr on a graph and add indicators on it they add indicators like moving average macd rsi on pcr to understand in which direction the market is heading so let us understand all of this in detail so pcr is nothing but put volume divided by call volume now say for any stock put volume is say 1 lakh and call volume is just 50000 then it is very obvious that the pcr would be 2 that means put volumes are literally double the call volume and it indicates that the market is highly bearish similarly say put volume is 50000 and call volume is 1 lakh then pcr value would be 0 0.5 indicating that the market is highly bullish so hence if pcr is greater than 1.5 it indicates that the market is highly bearish and if pcr is less than 0 0.6 it indicates market is highly bullish now i will tell you why it is very effective in the first 15 days of the month because in first 15 days of the month the premium decay is very less and a lot of people tend to buy options right they tend to buy call or a put in the first 15 days and as the time decay uh, becomes aggressive in the next 15 days of the month a lot of people start doing option writing in the next 15 days of the month so we see a lot of put writing and call writing and because of which the volumes of put and call also goes up in the next 15 days of the month but it but it would not give you a clear picture because i'll tell you for example if i am bullish on a particular stock then i might sell puts and because of my selling of puts put volume would go up in the last 15 days of the month but that is not a true indicator of pcr right similarly if i'm bearish i might you know I, I might start doing option writing in calls that is i am selling calls because of which call volumes might go up but again it is a misleading pcr so pcr is quite good in the first half of the contract or basically in the first half of the month in a monthly contract where the premium decay is not very aggressive and hence we say that pcr is effective in the first 15 days of the month and not very effective in the last 15 days of the month so this is about pcr now what a lot of analysts also plot graphs of pcr and add moving averages or other indicate i'll explain you that as well say basically they plot pcr let us say on day one the pcr was at somewhere here 0 0.4 on day two pcr was at say x point similarly day three day four and the process keeps going they just join the lines and draw a flat curve on this pcr line they will then plot moving averages suppose say i am plotting a 10 days moving average which goes something like this now on the crossovers of moving averages 
a lot of people develop technical analysis and then gauge the market in which direction the market is going it is also very effective rather than just applying technicals on stocks they apply technicals on PCR to give them better results moving ahead the next topic that we're going to discuss is OI OI is basically open interest now open interest means the total number of outstanding derivative contract that are yet to be settled that means at any point of time how many contracts are open between two parties that is a buyer and a seller how many number of contracts are still open higher OI means that the script is liquid it is very obvious that higher OI means higher number of contracts are open that means higher number of buyers and sellers are involved and hence the stock is liquid or the script is liquid and lower OI means that there are less number of buyers and less number of sellers and hence the stock is or the script is less liquid now squaring off open position leads to reduction in OI and is also called as unwinding we'll talk about this also in detail so let us try to understand OI and how it is different from volume consider there is a guy A and B now A wants to buy and B wants to sell let us say X stock whose current market price is 100 let us say this is a future future of X whose current value is 100 let us say A and B come into a contract and the transaction is completed so A has bought from B and B has sold to A this is a contract that is open that means A is also in an open long position B is a in open short position right so neither A has squared off the position at nor B has squared off the position yet. So volume is one that means one contract is traded and open interest is also one because between A and B one contract is open or one lot is open. Similarly, let us say there is a guy C and D. C also wants to buy and D also wants to sell and the transaction is let us say complete and there is one more volume and one more open interest now collective volume is 2 and collective open interest is also 2 indicating that there are two contracts that are open open interest is 2 now two contracts are open now moving ahead after say 10 days let us say the stock went up the stock went up from 100 to say 105 now B realizes that he is getting a heavy loss. D also realizes he is getting a heavy loss. A realizes he is getting a good profit and C also realizes he is getting a good profit. Now A wants to hold on to this contract. A has a bigger target. Let us say the target of A is 1110. Whereas B is scared and he wants to square off the position. And when we talk about C, now C is satisfied with the 5 rupees target. C also wants to square off. Whereas D has done hedging so he is also okay with the stop loss going up or basically the stock going up he doesn't mind taking a big loss because he has already let us say done some hedging now what is the conclusion is that a wants to hold this position b does not want to hold c does not want to hold whereas d also want to hold a open position so what would happen here is let us say c wants to square off the position he wants to book the target simultaneously b wants to book the stop loss so c and b would square off their positions by trading among themselves that means c would place a sell order and b would place a buy order wherein their position would get squared off and because of which there will be one more transaction so net volume is now three however now b is out of the trade and c is out of the trade so they have basically come out of a position now virtually there is only one open position between a and d so if A wants to square off, D has to agree. If D wants to square off, A will have to agree. So essentially the contract which was between A and B and C and D is now between A and D only as B and C have moved out of the contract. So open interest is now minus one. So the net open interest is only one. So this type of 
contract where a particular user squares off with another user who also wants to square off the position is called as unwinding. Unwinding simply means you are coming out of the trade and you are closing the open contract. So open interest and volume are two different things. Volume is basically number of transaction doesn't matter how many ever contracts are open or not open volumes will keep increasing. However, open interest means at any point of the time, how many contracts are currently open. So if a lot of people are initiating new open positions or if there is an increase in open interest, it would increase volume. Similarly, if a lot of people are unwinding or booking, it would decrease open interest, but it would, but it would still increase volumes. So volume and open interest are two different things and based upon volume and OI analysis, we can also gauge in which direction the market is heading towards. Let me explain you that. Suppose say we have a script price, its open interest, its volume and then we have to gauge in which direction the market is going to go. So what we see is what is the script price, how is the OI behaving? How is the volume behaving and based upon that we come to a conclusion in which direction the market is heading towards. So let me draw a box for example say I have four test cases. Let us say if the stock is going up or if a particular script is going up and its open interest is also going up naturally its volume will also go up. Now what does it indicate? It indicates that a lot of people are buying the stock or buying the script because of which volumes are going up. Open interest are going up means a lot of new positions are coming in the market and script is also going up that means the market is highly bullish. So if the script goes up, OI goes up, volume goes up, the trend is strongly bullish. Similarly, if the script is going up but OI is going down, if open interest is going down and volume is also let us say going down, that means a lot of people are closing their positions, closing their open positions, they are unwinding it and because of which there is a chance of trend reversal. That means if script is going up but OI and volume are going down, it is a potential trend reversal because of which we say that market is weakly bearish. Similarly, if the script is going down but volumes are increasing and open interest is also increasing, that means a lot of people are selling and a lot of short positions are being open because of which we say that market is strongly bearish. Similarly, if the market is going down but OI is also going down and volumes are also going down, that means there is a potential trend reversal towards upside because of which we say market is weak bullish. So these are the four cases by observing these patterns in the market, we can identify in which direction the market is going on and where is the potential trend reversal. In upcoming videos, I would try to explain all of this with real examples as well. However, in this video, we will only focus upon theoretical aspects only. Going ahead, the next topic is VIX. VIX basically means volatility index. It basically tells you how much volatile your index is. In India, VIX is named as India VIX and it basically is only focusing upon nifty option prices. It only checks the volatility of nifty option prices. That's it. Now VIX was first incorporated in Chicago Board of Option Exchange. In Indian market, it is allowed under the name of India VIX by the same CBO exchange. So VIX basically represents the expected price fluctuation in the index in next 30 days. That means in the next 30 days, how much price fluctuations can we expect in the option price as well as a nifty price that is what is represented using VIX. Now this also has a very very complicated formula. I'll just show you the formula as well. 
the wix is calculated by this formula sigma is equal to 2 by t into summation of delta k divided by delta k square into e raised to rt into q of k minus 1 divided by t into f by k dot minus 1 into 2 you need not remember this formula at all however this would help you understand how wix is calculated a lot of functions here are similar to how we calculate implied volatility and historical volatility wix is also a factor of volatility itself where t is time till expiry <coughs> k is the out of the money strike delta k is nothing but the interval between strikes that is half of the strike on either side of the k r is risk free rate of return q of k is the midpoint of ask and bid for each option contract now wix also involves in checking how volatile a particular index is uh, index strike is and based upon the liquidity of a ind index strike it also tries to gauge in next 30 days how much the stock can go up or down and the best way to gauge liquidity is going to the midpoint of ask and bid because of which q of k is basically representing the midpoint of ask and bid of each of the option contract for the strike k similarly f is nothing but the latest nifty price and k dot is the first strike below the nifty price so when we add all of this we kind of get a volatility which will help us to understand in next 30 days where nifty can potentially go so these were the three market indicators that is pcr oi and vix that we have discussed remember these are not technical indicators but these indicators are very helpful in understanding in which direction the market is heading towards so that's it for today in the next lesson we will talk about arbitrage what arbitrage basically means and how does it work and how does it help you make risk free returns we'll discuss all of this in the next lesson thank you so much for watching this video spread knowledge cause it's free and if you like our video do like subscribe and share it with your friends and i will see you 